There is a company from Germany that started with a tech demo that turned into the benchmark. The same company later made games that turned into benchmarks. The company we're talking about is Crytek, and one of those bench uh, games we'll be talking about is of course Crisis. Crisis is an FPS released 15 years ago on this day, set on the fictional tropical Lingshan Islands. You are Nomad, a US Delta Force soldier in one of the marvelous nano suits which basically give you superpowers. You'll follow a distress call from a team of archaeologists, fight North Korean forces that occupy these islands and discover something far more sinister. The gameplay was open for interpretation as you can choose your way to dispatch the enemies using the suit's special abilities. Enemy AI, while not spectacular, was formidable as they would rarely approach you in the same manner. Its scripted parts handle pace with care and you can feel the tension they are providing. But was this game known for all of that? No. And you can argue that its virtues don't shine as well as we remember, but no one can deny that Crisis was, scratch that, Crisis is still a beautiful game. That beauty, however, came at the cost of a high barrier of entry and steep system requirements. So high were the requirements that the joke of a question was born, can it run Crisis? Here we gathered our able bodies and our available relevant graphics cards. Just to answer this question, where is the line of Crisis playability in relation to hardware? And what kind of graphics card do you need to play it comfortably at a very high preset? We've tested around 40 cards. We'll break the results down into groups by manufacturers and generations, ordered by date of release. Due to the age and state of some of the cards, cooling solution, connection interface and silicon quality variants, take these results with a giant grain of salt. We can't be sure you would get better or worse result with a similar setup, but these results can be used as a reference. At the end of the video, we'll show all the results breakdown in a table. Here are the setups that we used for testing different cards. PCI Express setup was used with either Windows 7 or Windows 10, depending on the driver's support. For consistency and testing, we used Crysis built-in GPU benchmark. We'll start with NVIDIA GeForce FX 5000 series. While they should be able to run Crysis by specification, due to questionable implementation of certain features, we were greeted by the GPUs aren't supported message. So we have no results to display here. Moving on. The next group is the ATI Radeon 9000 series, where only two cards that we had were able to run Crysis. While not even remotely playable, 9600 Pro results were formidable. We had a streak of bad luck with the NVIDIA GeForce 6000 series. First, our 6800 GT didn't show signs of life anymore. Why? We don't know yet. It's a damn shame since this exact card is listed as the minimum requirements card for Crisis. Then our 6600 simply stopped giving any output in the middle of our testing. In the end, the only proper results we got were from our 6200. Next, we tested the NVIDIA GeForce 7000 series and uh, here we got our first playable performance on the low preset. The next group is a collection of ATI Radeon X cards. Take into account that X1550 is an AGP version and as such might be limited in its performance. We continue with our bit richer collection of the NVIDIA GeForce 8000 series. Here we get into playable territory for medium and high presets, depending on your expectations. In our next group, we have ATI Radeon HD2000 and HD3000 series cards. While 2600 XT and 3870 show their excellent performance here, 3650 AGP dropped the ball. We're not sure why. We will research this occurrence a bit more, but not in this video. Our next group is a group of NVIDIA GeForce 9000 cards. 
9800 GTX Plus gave us our best results yet, almost hitting 60 FPS average on high preset. Another standout here is 9600 GT, which gives us great performance compared to its release price. Our two cards from ATI Radeon HD 4000 series both have shown excellent performance, with 4870 hitting 60 FPS and high preset. We also have a bit larger collection of GeForce 200 series cards, and here are the results. Most of the results make sense and show good performance on high preset, and almost playable performance on very high. We found our GTX 280 and GTX 295 results inexplicable. We've run double runs on these, and still, the results are far from impressive. This also warrants research out of the scope of this video. The next group is ATI Radeon HD 5000 series. Here 5750 makes 5450 look like a bad toy. Our two Fermi cards make our next group. We had some issues running our 560 Ti as it stands on its last legs. Still, it gave us the best performance up to this point. Here ATI cards became AMD cards as we show results for AMD Radeon 6000 series. Radeon HD 6450 shows a lot of improvements over its predecessor. Our next group is a combination of GeForce 600, 700 and 900 graphics cards, one of each. Each one of these is handling crisis with ease. Only GTX 750 performance tanked on very high. The other two managed to pull a 60 FPS average on very high preset with satisfactory 1% lows. The next group is a roundup of graphics cards that we currently use. Each benchmark was ran on a different machine, specified in the chart description. Quite interestingly, Crisis is still a tough battle to win on a very high preset, for all except RTX 3060 Ti. Here is a complete roundup of the results. Our results are somewhat incomplete, as our graphics card collection isn't that vast. Yet, what we got is quite interesting, and not at all what we expected. Crisis at very high preset is always a tough pill to swallow, even for newer cards. Of course, we have to consider that Crysis not using graphics API newer than DirectX 10 severely impacts performance on newer cards, and the results we got on them can't be considered relevant comparisons. We wanted to see how good a graphics card you needed to run Crysis, and that's what we got. Testing so many cards was a lot of work, but also a lot of fun, as is the case with menial tasks while you are in good company. We hope you enjoyed this video as we enjoyed making it. See you around!